everybody and welcome to another top five board gaming video. Today I'm going to be talking all about bluffing games. Before I get started though I would like to invite you if you haven't done so to please take a look at all my social media pages. On them I will post whenever I get a new video released. I'll also post fun articles, giveaways, and all sorts of other cool stuff. In addition you can take a look at my Patreon page. If you decide to become a Patreon for me then you'll get access to videos ahead of time before they're released to the general public and you can also vote on upcoming videos as well. Moving right along into bluffing games though. I am a huge fan of bluffing and deception as a mechanic in board games and I've talked a lot about them in the past. I've talked a little bit about some of the games that you'll see but I just really wanted to do a top five about where you say that something is going on but it's actually not. So as always you guys know I love to hear from you. Please take a look and comment below on your favorite bluffing games or anything else that you want to say. You guys know I love hearing about it but without further ado we'll go on with my number five. Number five for me is Coup. In this game, everybody has two influence cards, essentially, which represent roles that they can play. And each role has an ability, and on your turn you can do something, essentially. And the idea behind the bluffing mechanic is that you can pretend to be somebody that you're not. People can call you out on it, you can say, like, no, it's actually true, and all this kind of stuff, and there's a lot of back and forth in that sense. And, as we always say, everybody is the Duke for the first round. The reason that this is lower on the list, though, is simply because it's less interesting than some of the other ones because there does tend to be a pattern with how people play. It's still a lot of fun. The expansion adds a great deal to it. It's fun. It's fast. It's easy. Coup, my number five. At number four, I've got The Resistance. This is a game that comes to us from the same company as Coup. And the thing with this is that it's higher up on the list because you get a lot more complexity, you get a lot more intrigue and table talk amongst everybody who's playing. But part of the problem for me personally is that there tends to be less time at the table and it doesn't come out as often because you need a minimum of five to even play this game. And honestly, you need seven to play a good game for it. But even so, it's got a lot more complexity, a lot more fun than Coup. There's a lot more going on, a lot more intrigue, which is why I personally enjoy it. The Resistance, my number four. At number three, I've got Deception, Murder in Hong Kong. In this game, you've got a whole bunch of people who each have a specific role that they're playing. You have one person who murdered somebody, and then you also have sort of the forensic examiner. So the idea is that everybody has to try to figure out who the murderer was, and also try to figure out who the accomplice was. So this is kind of cool because you have a really large collective deductive reasoning type of game where you need to think about and listen to what everybody else at the table is saying. So it can get really complicated really quickly, but this is the type of game that I really, really love. I love these logical deduction and uh, social reasoning and that kind of thing uh, when, I, when I see it at a, at a gaming table. On top of that, with Deception Murder in Hong Kong, you've got a lot of different roles that you can play, so you can really switch it up a decent amount and change how the, the game overall works, so it makes it a lot of fun. Deception Murder in Hong Kong, my number three. And number two, I've got Secret Hitler. This is a game that's similarly to how the Resistance builds off of Coup, Secret Hitler builds off of the Resistance. You have a similar sort of premise where you've got two opposing teams and one person is playing as Hitler, so to speak. And one of the things I really love about this one in particular is that you've got policies that you're trying to either pass or fail through the parliament of the government. And essentially, if you get too many fascist policies, then the fascists all win. And obviously that's bad. We don't want that. That's not good. And so so again, I really like the build-up aspect with uh, some of these games, and on top of that with Secret Hitler in particular, the idea is that you want to assassinate Hitler, and if you pass fascist policies, then it becomes easier for the fascists to gain more power and stuff like that. So you have a very dynamic table dynamic going on throughout the game that is constantly shifting, and it's a lot of fun. Secret Hitler, mine, number two. At number one, I've got Sheriff of Nottingham. The bluffing mechanic for this game involves what goods you're putting into a bag that will then either be inspected or not inspected by whoever is playing as the sheriff. One of the great things about this game overall that happened relatively recently is Arcane Wonders released an expansion for it, Merry Men. And essentially what Merry Men does is, a lot of what it does at least, is that it really encourages a lot more contraband, a lot more bluffing, and I love 
that. I really appreciate the um, the developers trying to do that because honestly, there was a whole lot of honesty when I played this before, and that's a shame. Um, I really love this this particular bluffing aspect because you can do it in a very strategic way. You've got bribing aspects where you can bribe to open somebody else's, you can bribe to open yours, all sorts of different things. You can play all sorts of really fun mind games with it with the sheriff. So it's a ton of fun. Sheriff of Nottingham, my number one. Well, folks, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top five favorite bluffing games. Again, this is somewhat similar to like deception games and all that kind of stuff that I've talked about previously, but in this case, I really just wanted to go into where you're saying one thing, but it's completely untrue. And for me, that is an absolute blast at the board gaming table. But with that, once again, if you would like, please let me know what your favorites are in the comments below or anything else that you would like to say. You guys know I love to hear from you. But with that, thank you so much. So very much for watching this video and I will see you next time.